Schatz in After being on the run for so long, it was a starry night, much like this tonight. I could not sleep because of the uncertainty of how I would be received. I, I remember as if it were yesterday how I felt. The others that were with me were all fast asleep. I decided to go off by myself to pray. I remember thinking to myself, it seems the closer we get, the more anxious I have become. Looking to heaven, I began thanking God for his interventions on my behalf. My heart began to be filled with praises to God for all of his mercies to me. Father, how can I say thanks for the things you have done for me, things so undeserved, yet you've given to prove your love for me with the voices of a million angels. I could not express my Gratitude, all that I am, or ever hope to be, I owe it all to thee. To The 
and let it be pleasing, Lord, to Thee. And should I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary for. With his power, he has raised me to God be the glory for the things he has done. Just let me live. My love, and let it be pleasing, Lord, to thee. And should I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary for. He has saved me with his power. He has raised me to go. What a blessing, Lord. Yes. I, I didn't expect to feel this way. You see, it all sounded so right while in Rome. But, but now, being so far from Rome and so close to Colossae, I cannot help but feel that old dread that drove me to run all those years ago. Thank the Lord I landed in Rome. It was as though God himself guided me. I, I, was, I, was, I was longing for a friendly face, a familiar face. Then I heard the stir in the market of a man from Tarsus. He was under house arrest, but he was allowed to receive visitors, and he taught the Christian way. Something was familiar about the man they spoke of. It was curious to me. And I wanted to see what was so familiar about him. I followed a few others who said they were intending to see him. I stood in the shadows because I was not certain of what manner of reception I might have. I listened to him speak. And although the hour grew late, no one felt the urge to leave. We were all mesmerized by his words. We were drawn into his narrative by some strange force. Then I recalled, this must be that same man who had spent time at my master's home when he had visited Corinth. He continued on his journey after a few nights in my master's house. And I was still drawn to him. 
And I wanted to make my presence known to him, but then I realized I could put my freedom in danger if I were to reveal myself. But I was compelled to return again and again to hear them. He talked about God making man new so that their old way of life was done away with and all things become new. This, this is what I want, a new life, a new beginning. I recall one night Paul talked about the power of the God whom he served. He talked of a time when he and a fellow believer were bound in chains, in prison. They were in chains and shackled to the wall. raised as he spoke of how God caused the entire prison to quake and the chains to be loosed from him and his companion. But it did not escape. He waited for the jailer to come and check on the prisoners. After he assured him that everyone was still in place, he preached Christ to the jailer. The jailer, with all of his house, gladly heard the good news that Paul shared. Paul rejoiced that God had allowed him to preach the gospel even from the pit of his jail cell. And even now, when I think of what my life was like before I heard the message of freedom and forgiveness, I cannot help but praise God for his great salvation that he set me free. The words are true. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Shackled by a heavy And oh, he touched me, 
Yes, he touched me. And oh, the joy that flood my soul. Oh, something happened. And now I know he touched me. And made me whole. Oh, he touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that flooded my soul. Something. Happen, and now I know he he touched me and he made me. After a while of hearing him, hearing Paul, I knew that I wanted to be this new man that Paul spoke of. One night, I felt as though he was speaking directly to me. His words pierced my heart. They both angered me and shamed me. He spoke of the spirit of the living God moving in our midst. And we should not put off one more day. He said, today is the day of salvation. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. And it was obvious to me that I had to make a decision. Either I had to stop coming here, or I had to go all the way. I cannot remember how many were in that small room. But suddenly, the whole room erupted in praises to God and His Son, Jesus. <laughs> I heard about these, these sort of meetings while in my master's house. But this was happening for real. It was happening to me. Oh, the joy. Oh, the joy was not to be contained. I laughed, I cried, I tried to shout louder than anyone in the room. Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I know that you are the Son of God. I know that you came to do His will. I am a sinner. Save me, Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and make me new. I cannot tell you when or how I got home back to my room. But I can tell you this. When I rose the next morning, I was a new man. I had that joy unspeakable that I used to hear others speak of. I saw the world through different eyes. It was like the scales had fallen from my eyes as well. For the first 
time when I woke up, I could hear the birds singing their songs of thanksgiving. The skies, <laughs> though overcast, were full of wonder for me. I could not help but be caught up in the glorious newness of the world around me. Later I learned a song that expresses what I felt then. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands hath made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou When through the woods and forest glades I wonder When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and see the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation, and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart, then I shall bow in humble adoration, and there proclaim my 
my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. I began to spend time in Paul's company. First, very quietly, doing small errands for some of the men and women who were part of his group. I finally introduced myself to him. I did not immediately tell him my history. I felt compelled to be as helpful to him as I could. I wanted to be part of this great work for the Lord. I felt like it was my opportunity to let Jesus know how much I appreciated his grace and mercy. The more odd jobs that I did, the more I found myself in conversation with Paul. Hmm. Finally, the day came that I was trying to put off. I am sure that God himself used Paul to force my hand. I had to acknowledge to him that I was a runaway. Paul began to talk with me earnestly about returning to my master. He began to persuade me that as a new man in Christ, I no longer was subject to the old way of thinking and responding. He pointed out that in Christ, there is neither bond nor free. He said that we are all equal in God's sight. It was difficult to hear at first, but Paul insisted that we all must choose to be slaves of Christ Jesus. No man chooses to be a slave. A slave has no rights. They do not have any possessions. There is no dignity in being a slave. Then Paul said something to me that astounded me. He said, when the creator of the universe set aside his deity, it was so that he could become like you and me in our humanity, so that he might be able to identify with us in every way. He said, then he took on the sins of humanity in order to satisfy the penalty of sin for everyone who will believe in him. Paul then said, once he did this, 
He returned to the Father and is now seated next to the Father in heaven. But before he left, he commanded his disciples to love one another, even as he loved them. The same command he gives to you and me. Paul says, our love for one another ought to be just as Jesus' love. In this, men will know that we are his disciples because we have love one for another and we lay down our lives for one another. We are not compelled by old relationships, but by a new relationship of love toward the Father and love toward those who the Father loves. It would be, it would be wonderful if I could say that after our talk, I decided to go back and face my master again. But that didn't happen. It took a while for me to be convinced that I had to go back. But Paul began to spend time with me talking about the grace of God. He also talked a lot about God's forgiveness. He pointed out that God's forgiveness was complete because Jesus had completely satisfied the requirements of atonement for our sins. Well, one day he began to talk with me about my master. He talked about God's work in his life and the marvelous changes that had taken place in his life. I had to admit, there was quite a lot that changed in his life. Paul spoke of his love for the body of Christ, especially those who met in his home. He spoke of his faith toward God. Paul not only called him brother, but he said that he was my brother as well. Often, Paul would remind me that old things have been done away with, and it was time that I let them go as well. More and more, the words to the hymn took on new meaning for me. 